Vega 64 has been released and 56 is being released and the MSRP is all over the place but what is the cause for these high prices? Seems everywhere I go it's just he say and she say and I'm just here to tell you guys what the story is currently, my thoughts on it and how it's going to affect me going forward as I want to review this card but before I do I want to clear the air and if someone says Brian but XYZ in the comments in future Vega videos then I just want to link them to this video to save me some time. What a messy launch, though new GPU launches usually are messy, however this launch is also being clouded in scrutiny from apparently, and I'll emphasize that again apparently as I have no proof of anything in this video so take any of this information of course with a spicy grain of good old salt. There are two very strong rumors floating around and the first will have it that AMD were undersupplying the standalone cards and oversupplying the game's bundle cards, in this case otherwise known as the Radeon Black or Radeon Aqua Packs. So these packs are $100 more than standalone MSRP prices and within those bundles you get a copy of Prey and Wolfenstein 2. And also if you decide to buy a Ryzen 7 1700X or 1800X CPU and one of three X370 motherboards, the ASUS ROG Extreme, Gigabyte Gaming K7 or MSI Gaming Titanium, then you got an additional $100 discount off this combo. Though all three motherboards cost easily over $200 and not being able to buy a budget Ryzen 7 1700 in this combo does start to see less appeal, especially for budget minded consumers. The last offer in these packs is the option to buy Samsung's new CF791 ultra wide monitor and get a $200 discount, which is quite enticing except for the fact that the monitor costs over $900. The pack itself apparently got oversupplied and the standalone cards were undersupplied and if that's true it doesn't make much sense at all since the amount of people building an entire system from the ground up would be a lot less than people who just want to buy the card. I mean look at how slow CPU clock speeds have come in the last 5 years as opposed to GPUs and you can definitely see the appeal of GPUs over CPUs and hence the demand for buying a graphics card over building an entirely new system. So apparently AMD wanted to sell those bundles to get an extra $100 in the hopes that most people wouldn't cash in on any of the deals. However I have heard rumors that retailers are being told to strip the cards out of the bundles and sell them at standalone prices. So again, I will reiterate lots of he say and she say out there at the moment. Though the second rumor is that the true MSRP prices are really $100 from what AMD have initially stated and those initial 499 prices on Vega 64 for example were actually rebated to the retailer and or e-tailer after they sold the card. So an example of this is that the retailer sold the card for $499 and got $100 back from AMD. So that would make up their shortcomings and they would have effectively sold the card for $599. And apparently this was only on the first wave of very limited supplied cards, especially for the standalone edition. This rebate I believe has now effectively expired and in Gamers Nexus's article, when they pressed the hard hitting question to AMD, AMD didn't have a direct response. They just said they couldn't control pricing and danced around the main question. By the way, Steve from Gamers Nexus does some awesome investigative journalism. I'll put the links to his articles in the description below. So anyway, back to Vega. It was released and AMD have spoken on the matter and they said that apparently it's a simple case of supply and demand and that they're doing their best to make sure suppliers get stocked up, which in turn will hopefully get prices closer to the suggested retail prices AMD initially promised. And in their defense, GPU launches in the last few years, especially higher end cards, have typically been sold out with prices that can go well above that of MSRP for months. So like Steve from Hardware Unboxed said, just wait it out a good month or two and also wait for the add-in board partner cards to hit the shelves and then see how pricing is from there. If pricing comes down or if it's $100 above retail consistently in a month or two, then we will know the truth. Though to further complicate matters, News on the internet will have it that the hardware on those cards is just simply too expensive to sell at the initial MSRPs promised by AMD. So retailers are forced to raise the prices $100 higher or else nobody will be making any money on these cards at all. Though I will give you guys my two cents. I mean Jay already gave his two cents and he is boycotting AMD completely. I wouldn't go that far personally just yet but the man does have his reasons and he has stated why in his own video where he says he has a trusted source that confirms this whole fiasco. However I will give AMD the benefit of the doubt for now, I mean look at the Nvidia 3.5 gigabyte fiasco years ago, apparently there was a miscommunication internally and honestly after going to events and meeting some of the folks in tech companies, especially at Competex with uh, small tech companies, I'm not going to name any names but some of them only know marketing, they don't have a clue about the actual tech itself, so after you see it in person, 
then you do realize that some of these defenses that may seem impossible actually do start to seem plausible. But before throwing the hammer down on AMD, let's just give it a bit of time. And the main thing I wanted to throw into this topic is quite simply us, the consumer. At the end of the day, we dictate the prices with our wallets. We always will. If AMD wants to charge too much for their graphics cards, well then I say let them sit on the shelves. Personally, I'm a deals man and none of this phases me. I mean, Intel, Nvidia, AMD, they're all publicly listed companies and their main goals are to either profit, grow, or grow market share. They don't care about you as an individual. They certainly don't cook you breakfast. They don't change your underwear or tuck you in and kiss you to bed at night. So if you have a sentimental attachment to either of these three companies, then I must raise the question, what is it with that sentimental attachment? I gave up mine years and years ago, and I recommend you guys do the same if you haven't already. Base a product on its merit and nothing else. If the product performs good and it's good for the money, or it does something that can benefit someone in a particular circumstance that another product can't, then awesome, go buy it. If it doesn't, then don't buy it. Though I will say this in regards to the pricing, I will be basing my AMD Vega conclusions in my review now on two different sets of pricing as there's just too many people talking about what appears to be very strong rumors and just too much talk of it to simply ignore. And also what about the miners? Well, I don't see that going anywhere in the short term which does in itself add to the problem. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then don't forget to hit that like button. And it's time for me to start benchmarking Vega and making some Vega content. I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.